This is an urgent alert to anyone eligible to vote. Whether you vote is a matter of public record. Your friends, your family, your boss, anyone can check and see if you voted this year. Who you vote for is private. Whether you vote is not, and will be on your record forever. Vote by mail, vote early in person, or on November 5th. Don't get caught skipping this important task. Paid for by Story Network Foundation. We're in Garden Stores, brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1279, April 3rd, 2024. Uh, we're in the middle of three days in a row when the high temperature was uh, record was set in 1921. It was 81 degrees on this day in 1921, 9 degrees in 1954, almost 8 inches of snow on this day in 2018. And our dear friends at Aquaside are going to bring us the ice outs. If you own a lakefront or a pond or a swimming hole that you think you can actually snooker people into believing is a swimming area, use Aquaside that gets rid of weeds and algae and all this stuff the kids don't want to deal with when they're swimming. The products are easy to use. They work quickly. They're safe. The EPA is weighed in. The DNR, they're safe for you, the family, and the fish. And there's no need to let weeds overtake your lake or pond this summer. Call Aquaside today. Tell them what you got. They'll help you understand what it is and get you the right products. Your place will look great all summer long. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350. Or go to Aquaside.com. Hail the flashlight, no, I'm, I'm doing ice outs now. See, Aquaside brings oh, that's the right. ice Hail outs. You. I was jumping the gun. On Minnetonka, ice went out today in uh, 1976, 1995, and 2007. However, for all we know, ice went out on this day in 1856 or on any, day, any April 3rd between 1864 and in 1872 because those years are unknown and white bear lake had ice outs today uh in 1995 and 1998 hail the flashlight king and now from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of spoon lake it's garage logic with chris reavers manning technology corner Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. We're joined by Mark Anderson, who's the managing editor of the Staples World. Hello, Mark. Hello. And I was sent by a listener... A story, uh, unfortunately, it's a little, uh, it's old news now. It was Wednesday, November 29th that you printed the uh, the famous moose story. And I was impressed with it as a thorough job of reporting. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I think that's exactly how it was supposed to be read with with that type of interest. What uh, what uh, motivated the people of Staples? They, they, they thought they were in downtown Manhattan or something for a Thanksgiving Day parade. They really turned out for this moose is that normal up there um no there's been moose coming through before but this is just this the one that that made a big splash on facebook and people were tracking it for you know a month or so the and, reason and, i thought it was so thorough is that when i finished reading the story i had no questions uh-huh that was a great uh, were you out in the field following the moose um, yeah, I spent about six hours following the moose, actually, and that was, um, um, like, like we, we got a phone call that the moose was in a field. I went out, and within five minutes, I had a picture, Yeah. but I just felt that I needed to, to follow up more because there were so many people out there. I thought there might be more of a story, and then there was, just with the moose jumping the fence. I got a picture of that. Sure, and the horses chasing it. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the uh, the unusual part is the horses chased it back and forth across the field. And we got the names of the people whose farms the moose uh, trespassed on. It was. Uh, are you yeah. the only reporter on the paper? Um, no, we have two of us who do who do uh, news reporting, but our whole office is only four people. So um, kind of like yeah. the Saint Paul Pioneer Press. Yeah, right up there with that. <laughs> Sure. Do you have a building? Does the world have an office space? Yeah, yeah. We have an office in downtown Staples. Oh, downtown. 
Uh, that's He's your, got you beat there, Joe. Yeah, the Pioneer Press doesn't have that either. Now, it's a, <laughs> it's a bit, uh, is it a bit presumptuous to call it the Staples World? Has it always been called that? Yeah, well, actually, it started out with the, the first uh, newspaper in Staples. The, the town wasn't called Staples. Um, it was called Presto because the railroad came through and a town moved up. And so they called their newspaper the Presto Changeo. Oh, yeah. Presto Changeo. Yeah, but then they... Uh, come on. Come on, Mark. You're <laughs> kidding. Is that, re- is that true? We have copies of the Presto Changeo here in our office. Oh, that's awesome! Why was it changed to Staples? I wonder. Um, because the uh, it was named after the Staples Mill. The person named King Staples opened oh. a mill. Okay. How long have you been at the paper? Uh, about thirteen years. And are, is there an editor, or do you also fulfill that role? Yeah, I would be the editor, I guess. Yeah. And and you often do reporting. You just don't sit there and manage. You're you're out oh, in right. the field. Yeah, no, yeah, 90% of it is uh, out, out in the field doing reporting. I do um, city meetings, sports, whatever's going on. Is with, the uh, is the paper healthy? Um, Yeah, we're doing okay, I guess. I mean, small-town newspapers maybe didn't take as big of a hit because, uh, um, you know, this is still the only place where you can get a lot of this local news. Right. Most of it isn't online. Um, do, do you so, lay out the paper? Yes, we do that. No, no, do you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do it myself, yeah. You, In other words, you're pretty much a one-man show. Um, you, you have some help, but you're pretty much, don't be modest, you're a pretty much a one-man band here. Yeah, there's times when I put the paper out a lot by myself, but yeah, but there's also times when the other people take more of a role. Do you cover sports? Week. Yeah, I do that. Okay, yes, uh, Rook, you had a question? Or who had, Kenny? Yeah. Please, Mark, please tell me you don't have to do sales. Um, not really. I, I kind of do that, but uh, it, it, that's not a, a big part of it. We have some regular advertisers, so that's kind of, All right. kind of I, what we go to. Obviously, Such isn't going to be truthful here. Joe Suchere isn't going to be truthful with you, yeah. so I'm going to. <laughs> um, one of his big irritating things, the things that's really stuck in his craw for many years, is the fact that reporting isn't what it used to be. It's a phrase we use almost every day here on the program. And I think your piece on the moose was one of the first pieces that Such has seen in a long time that didn't leave any questions unanswered. Do, so do, we're really do, here to just laud uh, your okay. writing. It was do, just do fantastic. Do you listen to the show? Do you, it's the first yeah, thing but you're I dancing said around it. You're dancing around it and coming <laughs> off as a big shot city dude. <laughs> no, I'm um, not. And I, I want to just be truthful with Mark and pat him on the back and say we really ex- uh, respect your ability. Oh, well, good. Yeah, well, I, I used to um, read Joe's columns, so... Uh, stop we we stop reading them, huh? Yeah. yeah. Was Wait, it because we, of we, Trump? We that, 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 yeah. He was pretty good back then, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. He had his day, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Mark, has yeah. any story in Staples in your uh, 13 or 14 years there, has any story received more space and photographs than this moose story? Um... I, I, I can't imagine. No, I think that's probably about the most. Well, it was a break from the real world, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, if we, we added pages for our state wrestling team, um, got second in state. Okay. This year, so I added a couple pages for that. So they, they probably got more coverage. But Are you up there near St. Cloud? No, uh, he's not. like an hour, hour past St. Yeah. Cloud. That's pretty You're close You're between St. Cloud and Alec? No. Um, no, no, we're closer to no. Brainerd. Yep. Yeah. Brainerd. Central Minnesota. Brainerd. Central. Uh, and you have one of the most fabulous railroad depots in the uh, in the United States, a two-story, big brick railroad yeah. depot. I love that thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's still used as a railroad depot, which is... You could catch an Amtrak there. Yep. Yeah, the Amtrak stops, and yeah. Mark, how old are you? I'm 56 now. Do you, enter, do you entertain any uh, uh, desires to move on to a bigger paper, or are you happy? Oh no, I'm happy here. I I wouldn't. I don't think I would want to go to a bigger paper. Um, we have independent owners, and they just let us do our thing. And they yeah. If the Star Tribune covered this, they'd call the moose they them. So I think you have a, uh, you got a good deal going. Well, so somebody somebody did tell us that it looked like a male. So I just went with that. 
<laughs> uh, Mark, and again, that wouldn't have worked here. I, I'm glad you went with that. Yeah. Uh, Mark, one more thing. And it sounds like Joe, uh, once again, isn't being clear with you. I'll tell you what he's what really wrong saying. With Kenny? Uh, he, what, what Joe is really saying, Mark, is are you hiring? Can I have a job? <laughs> yeah, right. He's fishing <laughs> read through the lines. I'm just so envious you have a place to go. There's actually a, a building that you can go to. And... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Mark, it was fun to talk to you, and it was a hell of a moose story because, as I said, uh, it, it left no stone unturned. And I, I'm serious when I tell you that's rare yeah. these days. That's re- real rare. On the front page, you also had a, the story of the uh, the hay bale was on fire near the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, you know, you need to know that <laughs> that's stuff. That's fantastic. Yeah. Right. Well, that's one of the advantages of a, a small-town newspaper. You see, you see it was... Uh, the, event, the moose came through the day before Thanksgiving. Well, that means I didn't have to write it that day. Okay. It didn't, didn't come out for the next week. So Perfect. At Thanksgiving, I had to tell the story of the moose like five or six different times, so all the mill elements are right there in, in my head. Well, on your opinion it. page for that day's paper, you also had a moose editorial. Yeah, yeah, just about... Th- things I know about mooses, because we do see them once in a while. All right. Well, thank you very much, sir. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks right. for calling. All right, thank, thank you, you, Mark. Mark. Right. You, Mark. Mark Anderson is the uh, is the editor and managing editor and uh, field. Reporter. Sounds like you don't have a job yeah. waiting for you there. For the Staples. Yeah. We didn't offer anything, did he? No. Yeah, you yeah. know, Kenny brings up a good point. I we all did notice a bit of jealousy in your questioning. I, I, they got an I, office. They they're downtown. They got, they got people yeah. downtown. Yeah. The and, first uh, Joe, I don't. <clears throat> I don't want to make you more envious, but I'm looking at a picture on Facebook of the Staples World Building. It's one of those quaint little old city oh, buildings yeah, that you yeah. see all the time, and really? it just just looks wonderful. And, and just wonderful. a little tip, Suits. One of the first things you need to know when when you're trying to get a job, you have to be able to locate the city on a map. Yeah, that's key. You've got to know where <laughs> it's key. at. You know what kind of chairs I see in there, Rook? What kind of chairs do I see in there? Inside the, um, what the, are they made out of, and what do they do? I, oh, oh, me, inside the office of the um, Staples World the, headquarters, the world, the world headquarters of the Staples World. It's a, uh, it it creaks. It's a creaking chair. Yes, I see uh, like a, a green leather. Yeah, um, okay, that's not what I see. Let's go to an Kenny. Office, an office chair. Well, let's go saying. to Kenny. What do you it's see? It's a wood. It's a swivel wood chair. swivel chair. Oh, yeah, so your yeah. feet can be up on the desk. Yep. Oh, so you're up like this. Okay. That's right. Yep. Yeah, what do we got here? Yeah, What's that's going? right. Hey, someone get on the moose story. Yeah. Probably. Do you think they can still smoke in the office? Probably not. Oh, it's probably that might not. be a statewide thing. Yeah. And you're hearing the typewriter in the background? But if they do smoke in the office, you know what they'd have in there? A spittoon. Mm-hmm. And what is Mark wearing yes. as he goes through his... A green eye shade. Yes! He's got the green <laughs> hat on. That like Hunter Thompson. And maybe yeah. even a garter. Yeah. Maybe Could even be an garter. armed garter. Could be a garter, yes. but he's got the green eye shade. Oh, yeah, and the coffee pot over in the corner. And there's a there's a doll that works there. She's a, a secretary, but she often pitches in on stories. Yeah. Does he have a jug in the second drawer? Oh, that's that? a good question. We don't know that. You know, he might be a teetotaler. We don't know. Yeah, but uh, I would. Oh. Uh, I don't know if he does. Right, but, you know, <laughs> part of the job. That's great. Uh, thank you. And uh, wow, that the big uh, as of three months ago. <laughs> That's no well, you know, you old, three months old it's, news. It's like perfect us. for us. Yeah, <laughs> Stacy, the GL geologist, weighs in on the earthquake in Taiwan. Oofta. Uh, a a 7.4 is a big deal, and she's noting that aftershocks are 6.6, 6, and 5 plus still coming in. She hasn't heard of many injuries, but it's very early in the process. Uh, but they got hit hard. If you saw the pictures of the office buildings, oh my God. Oh my. I wouldn't wow. stand underneath well, them. Well, didn't they mm-hmm. issue basically evacuation because of the tsunami approaching? Yeah. I think yeah. the tsunami warning uh, was taken off little, the board. Oh, it was. Late. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, 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 it did not materialize as they they thought it would. So oh, that, she probably sent that to us early. I know she said she hadn't heard about injuries, but there have been nine deaths. Oh, my God. And, uh, I'll actually will have that in the news. Okay, so, uh, okay. There was some. And uh, as, many, as many readers have noted, many listeners have noted, uh, Brian Buxton almost went on the DL yesterday. Hmm. 
Uh, he almost got run down by the running bratwurst. Mm, it was saw cool. that. You saw the video. Saw that. Yeah. 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 So they have a hot dog race yeah. here or a wiener race or something where everybody dressed, uh, the guys dressed up in their bratwurst costumes and run around the uh, warning yeah. track, and he didn't see them coming and had to dart out of the way. It would have been a hell of a mess if uh, Byron Buxton had to go on the DL because he was run over by a bratwurst. <laughs> Last week... <laughs> the boys and I posed with those same bratwurst in Arizona, and we congratulated number five. I posted this on Twitter a week ago. Number four responded saying, I was cheated. Ooh, the don't, tell me, don't tell me they bring their uh, mascots to spring train. You want to see the video? I no, I don't. Want to see how, do you get that, how do you get that job? So you're saying you get to travel with the team? I'm going to guess they were interns. Like, you know, part oh. of the team's internship. Oh. That's so a guy, 58-year-old. Yeah, I think fat, you're out. <laughs> gray, big <laughs> nice. You'd always oh, lose. <laughs> you'd you'd be it. number five in the race. <laughs> and you know that that I'll suit just smells. It. It's just ripe. Brooke, when we pose Bro, next to him. Worse could, than hockey. Yeah, it was it bad. Smells like chili. <laughs> yeah. I'm noting this uh, for no particular reason, except it printed when I printed a different story that I'll get to. But the first salty of the year has arrived uh, in the uh, Duluth. Oh, yeah, I did see that. That was a big that. one. Yeah, Jeez. it's called the Bar the Barbro G, six hundred and twenty three foot long bulk carrier operating under the Portuguese flag arrived under the aerial lift bridge at eleven forty four a.m. Monday. I wonder if Kathy was there to watch it. Did you mm, see it go under? I, I was not. cringing there for a second. It not. looked close. And somebody named Ryan Cosson entered the 41st annual First Ship Contest that's been run by the Visit Duluth and Duluth Seaway Port Authority, guessing that the first salty would arrive. He had guessed that the first salty would arrive at 11.45 a.m. April 1st. He was one minute off. Oh, I bet wow, he was just wow. hand-wringing, huh? That's do you, uh, Do you want to break some news right here yeah. on GL well, regarding it- Duluth? Oh, uh, yes. Um, from what I'm hearing from uh, the offices of Mrs. Cargill, yes. if she is in fact um, victorious or if she in fact can buy all of the land on that seven mile strip, right. we will be uh, dismantling the lift bridge and the seven mile strip will only be accessible by helicopter. Really? Yeah. Holy and crap. Now, you're getting this in your role as her public relations? That's that's what it's starting to sound like. Yeah. Yeah. They, You know, I, I get an update every day. They keep me in the loop. And I'm allowed to say that. Only will, that. Team. Will it still be a, a port for ocean-going boats? Oh, yeah. She, she doesn't know. She has no concern over over what goes on in the uh, harbor there. She okay. just, um, all she cares about is that seven-mile strip. And uh, where that airport is going to be turning private. And like I said, triple sevens will be landing there. So Ooh. you'll be, um, her guests will be able to access that either by their personal jets or helicopters. Uh, okay. I, I, this is your, you have inside information. Yeah. I just thought I'd give you a little one there, a little bit of info. Do you want to know what Jeff, uh, the winner, uh, Ryan Cosson won for being the, uh, the most accurate uh, prognosticator for the first arrival? Uh, yeah. Dinner at Fitgers for two. He, is, he wins the grand prize package that includes an overnight stay. And it doesn't say where. They got some good places up there. Holy and Lena. He gets an overnight stay. It does stay. not tell us uh, where. You talk, <laughs> now, see, that's something Mark Anderson would have had. You can From the sleep in the world. camper behind the uh, cookie uh, right. shop. <laughs> Mark Anderson would have said uh, to the uh, people responsible for this, "Well, where is the overnight yeah. stay? Is he what do I? What do I win? Right. What do I win? That's Everything right. above the erasers, but not next to the shot glass." Can we have an Ilhan Omar update, oh, please? I needed to. I might take you a moment That's to find okay. that. That's is she okay. in the news again? Well, are there I, antics? No, I have a ray of hope. Oh. I have a ray of hope. I haven't seen. Here is your latest are. Ilhan Omar report on Garage Logic. 
Don Samuels is very strong in the polling he's running against Ilhan. And everyone in Minneapolis should, of course, vote for Don Samuels. He he has put his money where his mouth is. He has lived in the neighborhood. He knows the people. And uh, this is the second time, I believe, he's run against Omar. He lost in 2022 by just two points. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I, I can't, I, if Minneapolis citizens, uh, I don't have great, a great deal of hope that they'll come to their senses. Uh, they've, they've helped manufacture what is now a, a very much a city in terrible decline. Uh, Samuels would turn that around or certainly take steps to help turn that around. Uh, the fifth, though, is the most left-wing radical district in the state, and uh, if not the entire country, and he would have his work cut out for him. But she's polling. Uh, well, he's she's polling at thirty percent. He's polling at twenty-one percent. Mm. Uh, I don't know how he's going to crack her solid constituency. Uh, but if anyone can, it's Don Samuels and uh, the people of Minneapolis. Well, the 5th District, which is uh, what? That's uh, St. Louis Park and Richfield and New Hope, Brooklyn Center, Fridley, St. Anthony, Columbia Heights, Spring Lake Park, parts of Edina. Why have you people done this to yourselves? She has done nothing for you. She's not there for you. She's there for her own worldview, her own ideology that has nothing to do with you people. And you have a chance now with Don Samuels to vote for a for a homie, for a guy that lives right there. He needs to get the word out better. I, I need to be seeing something at least once a week about his campaign, either in the newspaper or on TV channels. He really needs to get after it. And just think if he starts to pull even closer. Imagine how many more illegals we're going to have to get into the 5th Congressional yeah, District that's right. to register to vote. That's right. Uh, you got to wear his, that drum out, Chris. Yeah. How's his fund, uh, fundraising going, Joe? Do you have any info on I that? I do not have any could, info uh, on Don fundraising. could use some money. The, uh, book the, Don, Chris? Yeah, I was oh. going to say, why not have him on Garage Let's Lodge? book Don. That, uh, okay, Daniel. Uh, what's her name will not come on. She's been asked a thousand times. She'll go on with... Uh, People that would she knows that she was she in can, the building two weeks ago I with Mr. Tom Hauser with, talked to with Mr. Hauser. Right. Yeah, the last primary, Joe, yeah. one hundred and fifteen thousand votes were cast, and right. he only lost to her by twenty four hundred. So that's, you know, that, I mean, just two three months ago. No, the last primary no. which would have been the last election. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. But didn't so, there um, wasn't there another uh, person in that primary? There was three other people in prim, but none of them got more than six hundred votes. Uh, so okay. even those votes wouldn't have won it, but only 2,400. I mean, that's nothing in an election uh, with that many people casting votes. So hopefully, you know, that can spin, <laughs> spin the other way around. Uh, Minneapolis has a chance. Uh, whether they take it is problematic. Say my garage door guy is the whole family. Precision garage door of the Twin Cities in western Wisconsin. Uh... They have a number of characteristics that make them the best in the business. One, mm. they show up with all the stuff they need. They mm. don't usually have to run back to the shop to get a bolt. We had an occasion yesterday where we had to have the refrigerator fixed by a repairman. And sure enough, he had all the stuff with him. You can't beat that feeling. That's the feeling you get with Precision Garage Door. They want to fix your garage door on their first visit and leave you satisfied. They don't charge more for weekend visits. Love that. And they take care of everything, including if you need a new door. Uh, don't trust anybody else to do the door. Let them do that as well, the rollers. I'll cut the them springs. some slack that they might not have your door there that day. You may well, have no, to pick, get to pick out a door. Right, you, right. you work in concert with them to, uh, to come up with the right door. They'll text you ahead of time so you know they're on the way, they're on time, and they want to get it done on their first visit. Head to this GL or own business at precisiondoormn.com. That's PrecisionDoorMN.com, or call Precision Door, 612-263-6985. 
there's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncp gambling.org in Arizona 1-800-NEXT-STEP 1-800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342 in New York call the 24-7 hope line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369 not a garage logic town council member here's what you're missing what are you doing I'm eating an apple what are you doing Joe trying to get people <laughs> concerned here well I tried getting your attention the fact that we went 18 minutes long <laughs> Jesus. What's wrong with that? The podcast. You can do whatever no, you no, want. No, 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 no. Oh, no. yes. Oh, oh yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Let's get her going here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. See, we have these things called breaks in what no, deals no, with no. ad insertions. No, 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 I know, no. I know. <laughs> I mean, I can get you in on all the meetings if you'd like. No, 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 no. no you're no. good? Okay. Go behind the scenes of Garage Logic with unfiltered audio and video access, invites to exclusive events, an emailed newsletter from the mayor himself, and more by signing up at garagelogic.com. Just sit on it. Here we go. Here we go. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Souchere. Is this Jeff? Man. Yes, it is. It's our man. Let's let's hear a little bit of this. I love this song. You got a line and I got a pole. You and me, baby, let's take a stroll. Wander on down to the water side. Cut a little bait and see what bites. Jeff? I love Fishing with you, baby. Dang. I love your little catch me look. I love the way you tease me. One little wiggle and I'm on the hook. And I bet Jeff Dayton has a website, doesn't he, Chris Reaver? JeffDaytonMusic.com. And you can so, also just tell Google, hey, play Jeff Dayton, and they have a yeah. Jeff Dayton. He also has playlist. a really, really cool YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah and face stuff. And Facebook my favorite world. my favorite part about when Jeff is on, I know I have to do something here, but it's when Such gets political with him and Jeff kind of dances around it and yeah. doesn't say anything. That's <laughs> always no, got no I time. I really think I've gotten to it. Oh yeah, every time, every time you can start pushing buttons. Uh speaking of pushing buttons, uh we were having a well, some would call it an old man argument. I would say a spirited debate about lawn care before we joined the council this morning. Um, and I think I think we did decide no matter what else you do, you have to do two things to have a healthy lawn, two truths here. You have to water that lawn on the regular, and you have to have pro turf on your team. And that's as easy as just a click. Just It's just a click away. They're already sending experienced service techs out assessing lawns, customizing slow-release fertilizer and weed control plans, environmentally safe, guaranteed for results. That beautiful, healthy lawn, and I'm talking free of crabgrass, no dandelions, no broadleaf weeds. It all starts with a visit to the website, professionalturf.com, to schedule that free in-person Estimate. They've got three prongs in their approach, ProTurf does. Lawn care, landscape, and irrigation service. They do all three, and they do them well. Check them out. Schedule that free estimate, professionalturf.com. A fellow named Donald Will Williams in Minneapolis, he alleged that he suffered emotional distress after witnessing the death of George Floyd. And he sued the city, and uh, apparently he won. He was standing near by the Cup food store where Floyd died, and he he suggested he was subjected to assault 
intentional infliction and emotional distress, negligent infliction of emotional distress, and retaliation by then Minneapolis police officers Derek Chauvin and Tau Tau. Tau Tau. In his lawsuit, Williams sought 50 grand for each of the four claims. As such, Williams was asking Minneapolis to pay him more than $200,000. Wow. And I believe the city council has to vote on it. Uh, the suit was filed in Hennepin County District Court. The lawsuit was eventually transferred to federal court. According to a federal court document dated March 27, not that long ago, the city of Minneapolis and Williams have reached a settlement. However, the specifics of the settlement are not currently public knowledge. The Minneapolis City Attorney is scheduled to present the details of the settlement to the City Council on April 25. If approved, Mayor Jacob Fry will either authorize or veto the settlement. Well, you know damn well they'll probably authorize it. But Kelsey had a good point. The guy stood there. He, he, you, you saw the film right. of that. We all did. Yep. We all saw the video. It was the, pretty lengthy and people standing drawn out. around. Well, how long then before somebody will uh, sue the city because they saw that on video? Yep. That's I already have that ball in motion. Do you? And I'm adding on top of it since I lived on 39th and 20th South and I was uh, in the midst of those uh, nightly protests that I'm adding that on to. I'm going to go for a cool mill. I mean, this guy claimed. Uh, that he was fearful for his safety and the safety of those around him. Well, he could have walked away, I suppose, right? He, now, he is the guy, though, remember, that argued with the police officers at the time and said, you're killing them, and they basically, yep. Chauvin, Chauvin pointed. Well, I didn't know that he, he was that guy. Yeah, yeah he's the MMA fighter. Him away. Yep. Yeah, oh, MMA I, fighter. Okay. But does that necessarily change anything? Uh, yeah, no, well, it it explains why he feels threatened. I think that's the only reason he said, you know, said that. Speaking of that, and a brief aside, and I'll return to this, a brief aside. There's a fellow on trial now for uh, a stabbing death and the stabbing wounding of other people on the uh, Apple Apple River. River. All right. I don't know if he's guilty or not. I'm purposely not following it that intently. But have you seen the picture of the guy that's uniformly been used in the media? Whether yeah. it's a TV website or a newspaper yeah. site, it's a picture where you look at the guy and you say, he's guilty. It's a bad picture of the guy. Yeah. He's yeah. mean looking. He's got a scowl on his face. All I'm saying is, wait, that's, wait, wait. A, that's isn't unreasonable. His, isn't it his mugshot? No, it's no. a picture of it's him in, in the river. Oh, in oh okay. And, and it's just the camera just caught him in a in a uh, in a fraction of a second in which he happened to look like that. Yeah. As I say, I know nothing about this guy. I don't know if he's guilty or not guilty. But that picture is uh, an example, I think, of bias. Just don't have that picture. Can we go one more step sideways on this? Yeah. How do you feel about the video? which I consider graphic, being crammed down our throat yeah, on a daily basis. That. I don't understand I don't that. need to see this video or these still shots anymore. Yeah, I don't Stop get it. it. These, these news directors, what has happened to our news media? This is insanity. I don't want to see a bloody knife being wielded about. In the interest of fair play, wouldn't you, have, wouldn't you uh, pick a more neutral photograph? Uh, of the guy, because this one clearly says, <laughs> you know, you're a bad guy. Hmm. I, I guess I'm not well, sure. You don't, you but don't even know what I'm talking I know about. I do. You I know. You ex- don't read the damn paper. I'm the one that mentioned Joe, it was his mugshot. Oh. The problem is it, we're too not old. Mugshot, or asked no. if it was his mugshot. We're, we're too old, and the world has changed around us. Um, I would never even air that video, and I would use family supplied photos for all of the people involved there. I would not try to sway anybody with um, but, video and pictures like you mentioned. And I think that's their motive. You know, I agree I'm gonna with you, Suits. Back. I'm going to take that back. Hey, what? Do, you, do you really I think the, the, the media are swaying us? Yeah. Oh, the, my I, God. I are you out of your mind? I of think course they're attempting they are. Well, the to, yeah. picture sways it. Let me, I, I'm looking. Was there one in today's paper? No, I guess not. No, there wasn't today. There was not one in today's paper. You know the picture I'm talking about, Rook? Yeah, I do. Yeah, but again, yeah, I'm going to go back to what Kenny said a little a, a little bit ago. If you guys don't think that news 
directors and news outlets have an agenda to drive web traffic. You're out of your mind. That's been happening for years. But but they don't they don't know anything more about this guy than I do. They don't know if he's guilty or not guilty. But they're in the business of getting traffic. That's what their that's what their job is. So you think that picture would generate more traffic than a what I'm calling a neutral picture? One hundred percent. All right, without a doubt. All right, all right. Back to the fellow who's probably going to win a pile of money from the city of Minneapolis because he's claiming so much distress for having watched the George Floyd murder or killing or whatever we're going to call it. Uh, I, I think Kelsey's got a point. I don't think we're far away from uh, someone getting up. We have too many lawyers. There are too many of them. They're starving, which is why you have all these cases. I, I don't think we're far away from a lawyer saying, oh, you watch that on film? Let's sue. What, what, what's to stop them from suing? That's going to happen because they saw a video of it. There's so many things about that case that I still have so many questions about. How come nobody's focusing on the fact that the fire department that's just down the street went to the wrong place and sat there for a while? Mm -hmm. And if they would have showed up earlier, um, there's a good chance that George would still be with us. You know, it took a long damn time for them to get there. There's probably not a good chance that George would still be with us. Uh, based well, you know on, what I mean. He wouldn't have died that day. Right. But he, he apparently was was uh, destined for an early death, given his heart condition and his his overall health was not good. Uh, that None of that is to... I, never mind. Yeah, for all I know, he'd live to be 95. Never mind. I don't know what I'm saying. All I'm saying is... Uh, what are you saying? It, that and COVID really turned the world around. Yeah. If not the world, that and COVID really turned this country around. Mm. Yeah, that is not an understatement. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why don't we take a time out? And uh, I, I, one more thing I got to get off my chest. Another moose story? Here we go. Oh, well, that's a good moose story. <laughs> No, that's, I probably will never have to do another moose story because that one covered it. Do you think at the Staples World Desk they had an influx of interview requests back in November and early December? Probably not. Is is that a free website or is there a paywall? I I got on it and had no trouble navigating. We should it. make him an authorized um, correspondent for Garage Logic for moose for <laughs> everything. Um, Mid Minnesota, that's smack dab in the middle of Minnesota. Staples, the heartbeat. Not a bad correspondent. Yeah, he'll get to the bottom of it. Let's turn to Boston for a moment. Let's go. You know, one of the ways you could ruin this country is to uh, continue to have millions of illegal people flood in, and then upend the rights of the people who live here sure. to accommodate them. Mm -hmm. Residents are up in arms about a plan to shelter hundreds of migrants inside a former Boston area veterans building. I can't believe that Chelsea is soldier's home, which is for the vets, is going to be used for the immigrant overflow. Massachusetts resident George Belmont said on social media, how about taking care of the homeless vets first? Massachusetts... Democratic Governor Maura Healey announced last week that the historic Chelsea Soldiers Home would be converted into a facility to house 100 migrant families, including pregnant women. What about the homeless vets? Where, where are they supposed to sleep? Right, right. I choose veterans over everybody else there, Boston. We're going to come back with our newsman, John Height. Okay. Who you vote for is private. But everyone will know if you voted or not. It's a matter of public record. And when this election is decided by a handful of votes in your neighborhood, you don't want your friends and family to know you let them down. Voting is easy. Make a plan to vote by mail, vote early in person, or on November 5th. Make sure people know you did your civic duty. Paid for by Story Network Foundation. Break the height back to Sushi. Oh, right? oh, 23, oh, 4. Yeah, let's go. Mm, let's go here. 
It's the end of the world as we know it, and he feels fine. Joe Souchere. Uh, for this sea foam endorsement, we are going to shine a light on the fireworks commissioner, Joe Souchere, and whatever curveball he's going to throw my way right here and now. Three cars covered up, became uncovered. When's the last time we had the warm day? Two weeks ago? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, they had all been treated with sea foam prior to their slumber. All three started up immediately. Do you right. remember? I remember before Seafoam, and I had that 65 Impala. I would put it away for the winter, of course, with no Seafoam. And uh, every every spring, it would flood. So then I'd get a stick, and I'd hold the choke open, yep. and I'd crank it over, and a big ball of flame would come shooting out of the carburetor, <laughs> and then it would light the uh, insulation that was under the hood on fire, and I'd have a blanket nearby that I'd smack that fire out because I knew it was going to happen. Oh, the good old days before seafoam. That doesn't happen anymore. You put a little seafoam in the tank when you put her away in the fall, or if it's a winter machine, put when you put it away in the spring, when it comes time to fire her up again six months down the road, no big deal. Turn yeah. it over. Fires well, right they up. cranked for a while, but they fired up. Well, you got to get the gas yeah. into the deal yeah. there, yeah. and the canooter valve's got to open, and it's got to spray in there. You got to yeah. get into the fuel make it happening. You and it's to... our uh, the fuel making happener, right? Yeah. yeah. It's up to like that. It's uh, our job as GLers to spread the gospel of seafoam. It makes everybody's life easier. It keeps your engine happy, running strong, and it uh, preserves ignition vapors. I didn't even know ignition vapors were a thing before I started using seafoam. It's really amazing. The best thing is the most amazing part. We find this stuff anywhere. You even see it in grocery stores, believe it or not. That's a true story. I've seen it with my own eyes. I wouldn't believe it, but I was looking right at it. Seafoam, truly a miracle in a world of bad gas. Here is John Height. Uh, thank you, Joe. This news brought to you by North American Banking Company. Before I get to the news, if I may, and aside to what you were talking about with the photo of the fella in the murder trial. Yeah. Uh, back when I first started many, many years ago, about 1977 in news. Yeah. I, I worked at a TV news station, and that was when we first got video. Okay. This was in Bismarck, North Dakota. There was a murder, a very odd occurrence in Bismarck, North Dakota. And uh, we were shooting video of the suspect coming down a set of steps after police arrested him. And before that, we never could use slow motion. Yeah. We used slow motion, which immediately made the guy look. look. Absolutely. And we, we, we had about a two-hour meeting, uh, all the reporters and the news director, trying to deal with that. Well, how that did con- you, what concept. conclusion did you arrive at? Uh, we, we concluded it, it almost automatically made your mind go, well, look at this guy. He looks mean as hell yep. because you know, you know what I'm saying? The yes, look on his yes. face in slow motion. And, and we ended up using the video in slow motion. So <laughs> uh, I don't know what, well, I what guess that you means. Lost. So did you convict him then? Uh, he was convicted. Yeah. He was, it, it was a pretty cut and dried case. Well, I hope I you recall. can sleep at night. The prosecution <laughs> writes you a little thank you note, maybe give you a I, cheese platter or something. I was, I was a 20-year-old, uh, you know, uh, weekend guy, and uh, I, I didn't, you know, may offer I a lot. Ask, of... May I ask a follow-up? 1977, sure, sure. you said, was the first time you guys had video? Was that commonplace? Yeah, it was always, it was filmed before that. When I first started oh. working as a photographer, Chris, I would have to develop my own film when I shot a story. Oh, so wow. I would, and that really was bad on Oh, say Friday night when there was football and you had to have it ready for the 10 o'clock news because you could go shoot about 20 minutes, hope somebody scored a touchdown, get it back, develop it, and have it ready for the 10 o'clock news because it was film, not video. When I was in a That's... mess of guys trying to cover the Vikings after a game and the TV guys with the shoulder camera would, would get in front of me, I would just unplug mm-hmm. them. And then when they realized, when they realized what was happening, then I could wow. get back in front of them. What a jackass. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. fun. Good it was fun. John, so Who'd you learn that one from? I just Where's saw the, the plug and I thought, oh, let's yeah. just, you know. So all, all the stories we've ever heard about you are correct then, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm fascinated by John's story. Did you have a processing lab in the building? Oh, yeah, we had uh, a, a large room, you know, half yeah, the size I know. of the room. I, I actually right worked room. in a dark room, so I know what it is. Yeah. T- it's about a, almost a 20-minute process, well, isn't the it? The newspaper was, guys came back yeah. and went right to their dark room. Yeah. And, and, kidding. Uh, well, God, I'm, I guess I'm old. Yeah, Fascinating. 
And did you have, have to hang? To put, did you have to I'd hang have, the film yourself? No, we put it. We had a machine yeah. that you ran it. You ran it through. Oh, okay. And, and we'd hit the chemicals that way, but then you'd have a reel this big if you shot 15 minutes, and you'd have yeah. to edit into 30 seconds for the sure. 10 o'clock news, which wasn't always fun. And if you screwed it up once, that was it. Yeah. You screwed it up. You can't. There's nothing you could do. So, cool. Anyway, interesting. All right. In the news, anyway, that just all that proved was that I'm hmm. old. But an 18 year old says, uh, "This is uh, this is a bad story, a sad story. It would be funny if not for the tragedy." An 18 year old says he didn't know a gun was cocked and loaded when he pulled the trigger Monday in St. Paul, killing his friend, according to court documents. Adnan Abdullah Abdi of St. Paul, charged with second-degree manslaughter in connection with the case. Police say the death of 19-year-old Omar Nunao at an apartment building near the intersection of Marshall and Pryor Avenues was originally reported as a suicide, but investigators became suspicious when Abdi's story wasn't adding up. According to a criminal complaint, Abdi first called around 2 in the afternoon saying Nunao had shot himself. Abdi claimed he had fallen asleep while his friend was playing with the gun and that he woke up to the sound of a gunshot and Nunao falling on the floor. Later, when officers pressed him on the matter, he admitted his friend had left the room for a moment to go to the bathroom and that he had planned to, in his words, scare him. When he came back, he grabbed the gun, not knowing there was a round in the chamber, pointed it at his friend and said, freeze, pulling the trigger and hitting Nuno. Holy crap, that's not funny. So, no. we're, And you know funny. I know funny. So we're... Uh, wow. He wasn't telling the truth at first, but now he's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's, sure. It's not a legitimate defense. That's an admission of guilt, and he better oh, yeah. serve a whole hell of a lot of time. What makes you oh, think yeah. he will? Yeah. Well, he's in Ramsey County, so maybe that's what we've got going for him over there. Do you yeah, know what kind of firearm it was? I'm assuming it was a semi-automatic or something. A loud yeah, one. Because I'm even having trouble of believing the fact that he says he didn't know. That's what I guess I was but that's, driving at. I don't know if we're allowed to say that or not. <laughs> Too late now. <laughs> yep. Uh, seven months. This is a follow-up to a story we had talked about when it happened. Seven months after an 11-year-old girl was allegedly gang-raped in Bemidji, oh. prosecutors say they'll dismiss the loan charge filed in connection to this case because the DNA evidence doesn't match the man originally charged. Beltrami County Attorney David Hansen announced the development yesterday, citing a lack of evidence necessary to prove the case against Oscar Luna. It came about 40 minutes after the latest hearing in Luna's case. The Texas man, now 23, had been charged with first-degree criminal sexual conduct four days after police responded to the emergency in late September and talked to the victim. The girl said she'd been staying with a relative who made her get into a vehicle, and men then put a bag over her head, brought her Jeez. to a home, tied her up, and sexually assaulted her. According to Hanson, police found 11 men, in addition to Luna, inside the home when they searched it, and, 11, and the 11 were all foreign nationals. Police previously noted several immigrants without legal status were found, but not immediately identified as suspects. None of them were ever charged. The prosecutor added that police also talked to familiar uh, people familiar with the case, but the statements and physical evidence didn't match what the girl told police. Hansen did say, to be clear, there's little doubt the young girl was sexually assaulted, but the medical evidence from her exam supports she was sexually assaulted, but not by the man who was charged. However, because of the lack of evidence, Hansen said his office is unable to move forward with a case against Luna, although he noted Luna did admit that drugs found at the scene were his, and he will plead guilty to a third-degree controlled substance charge. When that is resolved, he'll be released for warrants in Hennepin County. So, John, I'm confused because yeah. when I read the story this morning, it yeah. said that he was the only one charged initially, correct? He was. Well, correct. Why, did, why yes. didn't they charge any of the other guys? Yeah, the other 11. Yeah, that I don't know. Because, I, 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 yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, because doesn't that seem like they weren't doing their job? If they well, yeah, the one why guy? weren't they taking DNA samples from all of them? Yeah, they took, uh, they had uh, the rest of the story. I don't have the whole entire thing, but three DNA samples from the female's body. But I don't know if they tested any other. Oh, God. Is she alive? Other, yeah. Yes. She yes. Didn't die yeah. as a real. No, no. 
U.S. Attorney for Minnesota Andrew Luger said eight people indicted yesterday for operating a drug trafficking ring in Duluth and the Twin Ports area. Each of the charged suspects there from Chicago. Luger said we're bringing all our resources to wherever in the state in Minnesota they're needed. Luger said local law enforcement agencies started investigating the ring, which involved the distribution of fentanyl and methamphetamine. Duluth Chief of Police Mike Sinawa said the traffickers found the Duluth area profitable venture for illegal drugs. Sinawa said people are buying their drugs here at a higher price than what they are in some of the larger markets. Plus, there's not as much violent competition in the Duluth area. St. Louis County Sheriff Gordon Ramsey said stopping drug traffickers is critical because it also knocks down other crimes connected to the illegal drug sales. Treatment and harm reduction is important, he said, but there are needs to be accountability for people that are selling and using. Uh, as we told you yesterday, big Powerball drawing tonight. It'll be worth well over a billion dollars. Uh, meanwhile, the last drawing supplied some Minnesotans with a decent amount of money also. Lottery officials say three separate winning Powerball tickets were sold in Minnesota, one worth $1 million and two worth fifty grand. According to the Minnesota Lottery, the ticket worth $1 million sold at the Casey's General Store on University Avenue Northeast in Fridley. Meanwhile, the two other tickets sold at separate quick trip stores, one in Hart Boulevard in Monticello, the other on 136th Street West in Burnsville. Those tickets matched four of the first five winning numbers. Question uh, for Matthew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you got? Do you ever pick your own numbers? Or do you always do I quick have. Picks? I usually do quick picks, but I have in the past, and it's the ages of my children, my wife, and myself. Oh, isn't that sweet? What do you advise as a lottery professional? Which method? Quick. Uh, quick pick. Okay. And you know, you. just buy one ticket. You don't need to buy 15 tickets. You That's got skin in the game that. at one. I don't need too to ask today. Too late for oh, that. I okay. bought five. Gotcha. Let's, uh, let's take a break here and see what else. Rook can share with us. See what else point. is heating up, everybody. Right. <laughs> hey, might be your home, everybody. Uh, 60 <laughs> Degrees is just around the corner next, this weekend, this upcoming weekend. And you're probably not worried about throwing that air conditioning unit on, even though you still remember when you turned it off, it was making some funny noises. You were happy to turn it off and not deal with it. Well, you should deal with it with WelterHeating.com. Welter Heating has got four generations and 120 years underneath their belt. And that means they've seen a lot of changes. So their certified techs need to be up to date. Well, they are. When you call there and request an appointment, you can do so online at WelterHeating.com. During business hours, a human being answers the phone. The Welter family has been around the metro area fixing heating units, air conditioning units, installing air purification systems all over the metro area. 612-825-6867. If you're limping around the old studio <laughs> during a Welter heating break, there's no shot. There's you got no shot at fixing your own heating or cooling unit. So leave it to the professionals. 120 years, four generations, Rick and the gang do a great job. Air condition or heat your shelter with Ray N. Welter. The earth is not your mother. The Joe Suchere Show. You know what the best part about working with Linda Keller is? I, I don't. don't. She is more up to date and on top of things than I am in terms of my own. Uh, Chris, everything is the best part about she, working with her. Everything. She sends me an email while I was on vacation last week. Hey, I need your uh, daycare expenses for your kids. You didn't include that. Oh, okay, I'll get those to you when I get back. Well, she knew I was going to be back on Monday, and she responds, Dummy, reports, now. Boom. Sent just like do that. It. Get her That's done. pretty good. She's, That's right. She's so awesome. She is awesome. She's also a GLer. And you know what? You got, what, 12 days left? Uh, KellerTaxService.com is the website. Go online. Book your appointment. I would assume she still has Saturday appointments. But if you are also possibly filing an extension, she will work with you that way. If Does you're she out have of a state. building? Yeah. I mean, I mean, she's got a staff and everything. Really? Yeah. Her own building uh-huh. where she goes to. Yep. Jeez. <laughs> Probably You're really down about that. Yeah. Be honest now. Come on. Maybe man. you could write for Linda Keller. No. Okay. She's got a neat office that overlooks in, her backyard in a field. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's that's, so that's perfect. Where I, went. I just wanted so Joe to perfect. feel bad. That's oh, she works out of her house. Yeah. But it's all and set up for her business. Correct. I yeah. know this yeah. isn't a big deal and I shouldn't keep flogging on it, but 
There's no white trash where she lives. I don't get it. She found the one spot in Minnesota where there's no white trash. <laughs> wow. It doesn't well, make an any sense. I got well, one right really across did. the road from me. It's yeah. added incentive to do your business and all of your tax uh, returns. So weird. Whether you're uh, Is filing. Is she up at uh, Real Motley? <laughs> right by St. Cloud. Yeah, right by St. Cloud. Yeah. Right by St. Cloud, yeah. Um, so anyway, KellerTechService.com, if you're filing uh, individual, as with a spouse, as a family, a business, whatever, she takes care of all types of returns. And like I mentioned, both in this state and out state, she'll take care of you as well. Uh, just tell her that you heard about her on Garage Logic. Thank well, you. Where is she? Seriously. Sock Center. Sock Center. Sock Center. Yeah. That's up there. It's a nice drive. Yeah. 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 Give me a, a little known fact about Sock Center, Joe. Lay it on me. Uh, Sinclair on. Lewis. Thank you, Sir. All right, all right. Oh, well, that's that's little known. Yeah, that's, anyway, yeah. in other news, uh oh, news to me. Going off. Is it Wednesday? One o'clock. The first Wednesday of the month, John. Oh, settle it's down. Going Time off. to put sea foam in the tank. First right, Wednesday, right, when you hear right. the sirens, <laughs> right. give everything that right? a dose. <laughs> yep, give it a dose. In, uh, in other news, crews opened up a second temporary channel yesterday in Baltimore, allowing a limited amount of marine traffic to bypass the mangled wreckage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which had blocked the vital port's main shipping channel since its destruction one week ago. Uh, and they're opening a third one, too. Work is ongoing to open up that third channel that would allow larger vessels to pass through the bottleneck and restore more commercial activity. The channels are open primarily to vessels involved in the cleanup effort, along with some barges and tugs that have been stuck in the port of Baltimore. A tugboat pushing a fuel barge was the first vessel to use an alternate channel. It was supplying jet fuel to Delaware's Dover Air Force Base. President Biden spoke on the phone with Chinese President Xi Jinping yesterday, marking the first conversation between them since their historic in-person summit in November. The call comes amid heavy global turbulence, the ongoing wars in Gaza and Ukraine, as well as North Korea's nuclear capabilities. Those were all topics of discussion. Other issues that have strained the Washington-Beijing relationship also came up, including Taiwan, China's recent provo uh, pro provocations in the South China Sea, and Beijing's human rights violations. I'm sure we'll be seeing lots of polls on the presidential race in the next, what, six months, is it? Uh, whether, whether, yeah, six. Whether they mean anything is debatable. Here's a couple from yesterday. In the latest Wall Street Journal poll, Donald Trump leads President Biden in six battleground states in the 2024 election. Uh, Trump garnering a lead between two and eight percentage points among voters in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, and North Carolina. The results were similar in one-on-one -on -one matchups with Biden as they were if there were a third party candidate. And the traditionally conservative leaning Rasmussen poll has widened in the lead and his numbers getting stronger. Approval rating has picked up five points since March 24th. It was at 40% then, now at 45%. For the first time since last October, his approval rating is higher than Donald Trump in the Rasmussen poll. Uh, more information on the earthquake you talked about earlier, Joe. The strongest earthquake in a quarter century rocking Taiwan during the morning rush hour, killing nine people, stranding dozens of workers at quarries and sending some residents scrambling out of the windows of damaged buildings. The quake, which also injured more than 1,000 people, centered off the coast of rural mountainous Hulian County, where some buildings leaned at severe angles, their ground floors crushed, while the buildings leaned to one side or the other. Did you see Rescuers that bridge that was going back and forth? I it was didn't. On Twitter. It was, that was scary as hell. Huh. Thank Rescuers you. Yeah. Got it. Rescuers fanned out in Julian looking for people who may be trapped and using ex uh, excavators to stabilize damaged buildings. We really live uh, in an uninteresting part of the world, don't we? Geographically. Yeah. Uh, we yeah, just I don't want really not much. Well, we get tornadoes. Very seldom compared to other parts of the country. The there. only thing we really have to worry about is the uh, Yellowstone volcano. If that goes, we're done. So are, what are we? We're lucky. I guess. We're lucky. We're just lucky, yeah. yeah. Speaking of geography, I was studying the globe last night, and I was—I forgot to bring it in today. I was going to quiz evening, all of you huh? guys during the um, <laughs> off-air portion of the show. It, it, and I'll just throw one of them at you, the one I remember. If you went directly north from here and you ended or um, landed on the North Pole and you kept going, what direction would you be going? South. And what countries would you go through before you hit Antarctica? 
before you got to the South Pole? You mean before you got to the South Pole? When you leave the North Pole, what countries are you going through heading south? This This country. I know. No, if you keep going, you go you, north. You go the other way, right? You're to the, the other North side Pole. China. Yeah. Now you're going south. What are the countries? Give me two main countries you go Sweden. Through. Russia, Russia and China. Okay, thank you. Oh. And Mongolia, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. I hear they oh, have nice goulash right in Mongolia. There. And if you're on the South Pole <laughs> and you head <Hungarian>. north. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> If you stay on that same line, is that longitude or latitude up and down? Is that latitude? If you latitude is si- sideways, longitude is up and up down. And down. So if you're on the same longitudinal, is that a word? Mile, line, Look, yeah, mile from the South Pole, and you want to end in Minneapolis, St. Paul. This is a fun game. What Are we countries in break? do you go through? Know. Look up what a novel about a woman who flies. Uh, uh, attempts to Kites. fly around the world oh. vertically. Not I'm going to tell you something. I told shocking. you guys about this book, and I just thought it was, but I can't remember the name of the. If book. you're going north from the South Pole, you do not go through South America. You completely huh. miss the it. Great Circle. Yes, by the Maggie Great Shipstead. Circle by Maggie Shipstead. Fantastic novel, The Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead, and she wants to be the first woman to circumnavigate the globe. What would that, that be? The long way? That <laughs> the, is awesome. The north south way? How do you oh, do I would that? love to read that. She was in the Arctic and you took off and uh, you can get there. You, know, <laughs> you only go one <laughs> way. I don't know where she took I off. I am from. such I a remember. nerd that I can sit and look at a globe for hours. That's well, how easy I, it is to make me happy. If you were going to fly from here to Australia, wh- wh- where would you go? I think you would Australia. go south. You would Australia. go southwest, wouldn't you? You'd go north. I'd take Delta. <laughs> Why would you go northwest? Well, think about it. it it's, you know. It, Damn it. I should have brought my globe in. Yeah. All right. You, Can wow. we break? I'm going to run down to the house. You know, by the way, I'm surprised you guys, are, or you don't know how to say the lounge of whatever, because you do cross the river twice to get to the edge. <laughs> I, I have a nice globe. I, I'm not going to ridicule any attempt by someone to say that the globe is worth studying. Oh, yeah. It's wonderful. It's, it's, it's fascinating. Great flight yeah. path. From MSP to Australia. Well, you, at the right very now. least, you'd it's be going west. Southwest. I'm, yeah, southwest. It's got to be southwest. Well, there's different flights, apparently. Uh, you, I don't we, care what Such, airline it is. Such, we just screwed ourselves. You are going to get so many emails. Oh, yeah. I uh-huh. believe you go through Alaska. That. It looks like on this particular okay, flight Okay, look route. at me, Rook. You go uh, north Rook. by northwest. Ooh. I'm standing now. Jeez. Facing south, would you agree? Yes. The front. The yes. Okay. To fly to Alaska, or to fly <laughs> to. Uh, he's, he's flapping his arms as if to fly to right fly now. Fly to Australia. <laughs> I'm going that way. That's northeast. No, that doesn't work. You, uh, he's actually facing west. I'm not going to go. To yeah, Australia. you're facing west. By the you way. have to turn not, to the I'm glass behind south. you. No, you're not. No. Think of the no. Out there, he doesn't. No, tell him his, to face the glass. His his headphones. You need to face the glass to be to be south. Because oh, I'm going on Cretan. Oh, Jesus, oh, you're wrong. Oh, yeah, I want to make it time in the town. The light rail goes by this way, and Christ, it goes yeah. east west. Have hundreds of thousands of listeners every day. I can yeah. see why that there are now millions. You know, um, let me let me do one. Why don't you wrap story. it up, John? Because this well, just uh, fell apart completely. With put it Mr. to the wrap. Globe. I, uh, You're welcome. Mr. Globe. <laughs> You're welcome, G. Put it to the wrap. Don't give me no crap. Remember on Pee Wee's Playhouse, they had Globy. So from now on, yes. Kenny, your Globy. Thank you. I do have a big, huge, round head. Uh, let me do one more story. I wanted to get to it yesterday, and I uh, I did not make it that far in my newscast. Uh, Lou Conter, the last known survivor of the battleship Arizona, which sank and the loss of 1,177 sailors and Marines at Pearl Harbor has died. He died Monday at his home, Grass Valley, California. He was 102 years old. Wow. Can I get an amen? Oh, beautiful. Oh, he... it, it breaks my heart that you could probably go into the average public school in this country and the kids really wouldn't know about Pearl Harbor. 
Yeah, that would be uh, very sad. Uh, yeah. By the way, a lot Lou, of wood. Uh, a lot of wood. I, I think it depends on the school, but yes, yeah. I, I I don't disagree with you. Uh, Lou's attitude, by the way, uh, it's a long, great story. It was in yesterday's paper. I read it, all John. Over I loved online. it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, at the end, uh, how's this for an attitude? Uh, he said he got tired of people calling him a hero. He said the 2,403 men that died are the heroes. I'm not a hero. I was just doing my job. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. What a great quote. And he stayed in the service for quite some time. He did, yeah. He retired from the Navy in 1967 as a lieutenant commander and then worked as a real estate broker and developer in the Los Angeles area. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah. He's 102 years old. Hmm. So there you go. The brown wow. sound? You cannot stop him. He'll just make a move. Joe Suchere. 22 below. So cold it froze my ears. So I said I'm out of here. Democratic Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers vetoed a bill yesterday that would have prevented males competing with females, transgendered males. And he said that would be too harmful to the LGBTQ WTF community. <laughs> WTF community. I added the WTF. Good, good. I love it. I love it. Uh, I, it's, you know, be trans, but that doesn't mean you get to compete against women. Nope. I I have a vested interest in a little one who's gonna is a hell of a swimmer. Well, she will stand no chance against a guy. Hmm. Right. So uh, why on. is that? Where are women to rise up and say and that's that was my question? Am I just not hearing them or not seeing them? I mean, be trans, have your own tournament. I don't care. But, but are, quit pretending or don't ask me to pretend this is fair. Our women have for many, what, a hundred years or longer and still are to this day fighting for their rights. But I just don't see the protest now. No. Uh, this ever is pretty precious. He's uh, He just doesn't want any anyone to hurt or offend the LGBTQRFWTF. Mm -hmm. Explain something to me. It says here in the AP piece that Republicans don't have the votes needed to override. Does that mean they just don't have a big enough majority? Right. Is that that's right. what that means? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, in Vermont, uh, the legislative body is advancing a bill to hold the manufacturers of fossil fuel responsible for uh, climate change, for the damage caused by climate change. The state Senate is expected to give final approval this week to the proposal, which would create a program that fossil fuel companies would pay into for climate change. Uh, well, first of all, uh, the fossil fuel companies have nothing to do with climate change. The climate's always changing. and There is no climate crisis. But Vermont wishes to point to a, a flood uh, last year uh, that they called catastrophic. Maryland, Massachusetts, and New York are considering similar measures. But Vermont's bill is moving uh, quickly. Uh, of all the fossil fuel companies, uh, well, here here's Jordy's idea. What do you got? Well, then, if you could afford it, I suppose they can't. Then pull out of Vermont. Thank you. And That's see what how I was long just they thinking. last without gas and heat. I was just thinking that don't pay the fine and then whatever happens, happens. They don't need Vermont. Of course, you're killing many small businesses along the way there. Well, just don't, you're, no gas stations in Vermont, no electricity, no nothing. Just live in harmony with nature. That's a fun idea, but think of all the mom and pop shops owned across Vermont that sell gas and, and menthol and one, menthol cigarettes. I would even <laughs> add this. If you're coming down from the South Pole, North Pole to get to the South Pole, don't go through Vermont. Skip it. Jordy did the sense wins. When do you think the uh, greatest natural disaster in Vermont history occurred? Uh, 18... 
If I remember right, it was 1881. It was in the fall of that year. The Great Vermont Flood of 1927. Yeah. It stands as the greatest natural disaster in Vermont history. Devastation occurred throughout the state with 1,285 bridges lost, as well as countless numbers of homes destroyed, buildings destroyed, and hundreds of miles of roads and railroad tracks destroyed. More than 100 years ago, and you precious fools now in the Vermont legislature. Wait a minute, Mr. Math. 1927 was only 97 years ago. Yeah, like I said, almost 100 years ago. Right. Right? Almost 100 years ago. Yeah, almost, but you said over. I know. I thought almost. I said 1924. Well, even that would have been 100 years, even. Never mind. It was a long Never time mind. ago before. Way back when. Before Way legislatures back. raised this preposterous notion that somehow fossil fuel producers should be responsible for this. Then none of them should drive. None of them should heat their homes. None of them should have washers and dryers. Nothing. Why don't you walk the walk? I have a wonderful idea, and it came to me yesterday when I saw a trivia piece about how the whaling industry whales for oil that industry died within a few days when people started using fossil fuels to yep. light their homes and power their um, furnaces and fire their automobiles. You know we should happy? go back to whale oil. You know who was happy? The whales. <laughs> <Yep>. The whales. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got a lot of stuff we need to cover here. Uh, Cal wonders, I haven't seen in the paper uh, about the return of the food fraud suspects who went back to Africa. Oh, yeah. It has been way longer than the 30 days they were given to tidy things up. Have you heard anything? Thanks, nope. Cal in 50 Lakes, Minnesota. No, Cal, I haven't. Isn't that something? <laughs> well, I'm sure word. they're on their way. Well, I'm, they there could was, have visa problems. Right. There was some news earlier this week, maybe Monday, in uh, relation to Ellison and somebody getting kicked off of something. Do you remember that, no, John? Did you I see don't. that? I, I don't, know. From the center of the American experiment, six years ago, what year would that have been? 2018. Six years ago, Minnesota's per person gross domestic product was $3,237 higher than the U.S. generally. Wow. Today, that number has dropped to $43 higher than the U.S. Are generally. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's a big one. It also says, if you haven't gotten tickets for this one-of-a-kind event yet, now is the time. We just have a handful of seats left for next Thursday's talk with Michelle Tafoya and Joe Souchere at the Metropolitan Ballroom in Golden Valley. The conflation of sports and politics, 5.30 to 7.30. Just a cocktail hour deal. That happened to be mentioned there and there. That's neat. And their deal. Yeah. The GD, say those numbers again. Six years ago, Minnesota's per-person GDP was $3,237 higher than the U.S. generally. Today, that number has dropped to just $43. Wow. What Does it cite a specific reason why, I wonder? Uh I, 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 this was their daily uh, uh, email, and I did not. I apologize. I did not do the follow up on that particular story. This boy, reporting. Just I think, what, I, I think I'll save be. this and do that. What are you going to do, Walls, when it's zero? Because it's damn close. If it's only forty three. <laughs> yeah, but that means that doesn't mean the gross domestic product per person is forty three dollars. Our gross domestic policy per person is just $43 higher than the rest of the U.S. That's, I guess, what I'm saying. And the word generally needs to be parsed, too. I don't know what that means. Okay. All right. Maybe it would be worth having that particular person on to discuss. Well, I, I again, I should have gone to the site. Time was crunching, and I didn't go to the site. Got it's it. a great site, AmericanExperiment.org. I would visit it routinely uh, if I was if I was use. American. I'm going to do it right now. The great flood in Vermont was 1927. Well, we're going to sue the uh, gas station today. Go bleep yourself. Uh, I've been happy to be sharing with you the information about 
renewal by Anderson. They're award-winning windows and patio doors and entry doors. They're really a fantastic operation. They're Minnesota born and bred. They design and engineer their acclaim windows here. They're a J.D. Power Award winner. That means highest customer satisfaction among window and patio door manufacturers, four years running, all of that verifications on their website. Same for the most ever five-star reviews in the greater Twin Cities area among leading full-service window replacement companies. You can log on to RenewalByAnderson.com to see where and how they received those statistics, but better yet, take my word for it and spend your time on the website checking out this cool products they're the best and they can prove it so whether you need windows patio doors or entry doors renewal by anderson has the best products and the best service learn more at renewal by anderson.com backslash garage logic or call renewal by anderson at 651-705-6931 and it's courtesy of Renewal by Anderson that we get only because let's see where they are. They're they're now traveling. They're well, they're still in Apache Junction, Arizona. The traveling Lymans are in Apache uh, Junction, Arizona. And it's uh, oh I ripped this thing. Jeez Louise. Quick aside, um, I just glanced through this article that you were referencing on AmericanExperiment.org. Yeah. We need to have John on to talk about this. Hinderocker? No, this is John Phelan. Phelan? We are currently 43rd in the union in that regard. Really? Okay. Book him for tomorrow. I'll, I'll and reach I'll out follow to up and read on this. Okay. On this day. Joe, today is April 3rd. In 1859, in Wright County, Oscar F. Jackson was found not guilty of the murder of his neighbor, Henry A. Wallace. Although there was a good deal of evidence against Jackson, a forensic examination of Wallace's body did not offer sufficient proof of his guilt. After his acquittal on April 25, an angry mob lynched Jackson in Wallace's house. Jeez. Because of the authorities at Wright County cooperated with the lynching, Governor Henry Sibley offered a $500 reward for their capture. These events mark the beginning of the Wright County War. On this day, uh, 4-3. In 1920, St. Paul's Union Station opened. Oh. And boy, I bet in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, even through into the 60s, that was bustling. 104 years ago. Yeah, that was bustling. Mm -hmm. On this day, <laughs> April 3rd, in 1970, what big event happened in Minneapolis that turned that turned things around in the music world? 1970. Opening of First Avenue? That's right. Or what was it called back then? The Greyhound Bus Depot. Greyhound Bus Depot. The former Greyhound Bus Station in Minneapolis opened its doors as the depot. Twelve. I saw Joe Cocker and Mad Dogs and Englishmen there soon after they opened. In fact, it might have been the first concert there. Was there a lot of buildup beforehand? Yeah, it was a big deal. Hmm. Uh, it's a neat place to watch a show. Does anyone know what Joe Cocker did before he be got gathered fame as a singer? He was a uh, lawn service technician. No? Well, how about you, Mr. FYI? I, I don't. Was he like an iron worker or something? You're close. Sort of weird, he was a pipe weird... fitter. Pipe fitter. There we go. The former hey green <laughs> He became a rock star. What's the difference? Oh, sorry. He could lay the pipe. Please. <laughs> Twelve years later, it would be renamed First Avenue by Steve McClellan, the booking agent of the club. And was, Jack, yes. Did you ever meet Steve? No, but I know of him. Yeah, God, he was a sourpuss. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you two could have a screaming oh, match for the yeah. ages. Angry My all God. the time. I am not oh, angry. Jesus. I am not angry. Well, I think it sucks more than you do. Hey, I'm not that angry. That's true. I'm not. You're not. I well. damn it. <laughs> uh, and Jack Myers, the club's financial manager, uh, and they they failed as often as not, really, didn't they? Uh, they had a tough time of it. Uh, little known fact about uh, your uh, traffic reporter, the former soul man. That's where I proposed. 
Oh, look at you, you romantic. What were show you, was it? Were you half in the bag? <laughs> half? Give me a break, buddy. <laughs> 80, 90%. It was, was Uber in. in the bag, Suchi boy. <laughs> Why do you think I proposed? <laughs> hey, I got an idea. <laughs> and she was equally half in the bag. Yeah. yeah. The club's uh, financial manager, a cornerstone of the city's music scene, First Avenue hosted local and national acts and was featured, of course, in Prince's movie, Purple Rain. And I'll give you another piece of trivia, and John might know the answer. What singer, and I'm even going to give you a hint, female singer, was married on stage in the main room? Tiny Lucinda Tim. Williams. John got it right. Lucinda Williams. Really? Yep. Which marriage? Yep. Well, the, I don't the most know recent. the answer to that. She's, okay. she's still married to the guy. Oh, cool. really? Wonderful. It was just a few years ago, five that's, maybe. That's four nice five. for her. That's good. Uh, that's good. Thank you very <laughs> she much. Had a, she had a stroke, you know, which is Yes, sad. I did know I that. don't think that so. will affect your singing because it sounds well, oh, like she had a stroke geez. anyway. Yes. Oh, well, that's, no. that's right. I'm oh. never going to talk music again. Oh, yeah, God. Never mind. Word, what she was right. I saw both Lucinda and Victoria music, Williams. In Austin, Texas, at South by well, that's Southwest. That's where to see her. Right. Saw them both in one weekend. Hey, GLers, a town council membership. Yeah, it's still there for you. It's full video and full show audio, including before, during, and after the show with the entire Garage Logic crew. Those are just a few of the great perks of a town council membership. You will even get your own official member card and a certificate from the mayor himself, along with invites to exclusive events. <gasps> More on that coming Monday. You can learn more about the town council and become a member right now at garagelogic.com.